Hey Bubble Family, welcome back to the channel. Um, so firstly, thank you to everyone that is joining me here. I really do appreciate you, as you know I do. Um, so before I get into my Tuesday tantrum, as you can see, I have shut my blinds behind me because I do respect the fact that so many of you have messaged and said, please, please do something about the lighting behind you. Um, so I do apologize for the people that have struggled to see me. Um, in the video so hopefully um this has just been while my front room has been decorated so at some point i will go back downstairs so you can hopefully see me better but in the meantime i've shut my blinds so i hope that is better for you so i see i do listen to you guys um also as well i have had quite a few emails from people that have often asked me the makeup or skincare that i use um some people have said you know, could I do a video um, on this? You know, as obviously, as so many of you know, I'm 49 this year. So <clears throat> I'm one year away from the big 5-0. Um, so, you know, I do see a lot of makeup tutorials and things like that out there. Um, and there's a, a brilliant lady in it for the more mature lady out there. Um, she's called Hot and Flashy. Um, so I'm going to give her a shout out because she's very good. So, you know, I'm not going to go into the realms of doing kind of like a tutorial and things like that, because that's completely different to what my channel is about. However, I do hear you. So at the end of every video, I will just tell you the products that I'm wearing today in this video. Um, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, and these are only my recommendations for my um, skincare. Obviously, I advise you, like many people will tell you, um, influencers out there will tell you, you know, please do your own research because obviously it might not be suitable for your skin. You know, I would definitely say get to know your skin first before trying products because you might um, have a reaction to them. So that being said, let's get into my Tuesday tantrum. So, uh, kind of following on from yesterday's video that I did uh, around the histrionic, um, oh, I put my glasses on, sorry guys. Um, yeah, around the histrionic um, personality disorder and the narcissistic personality disorder, um, a few people have stated that um, they felt that, that, that I, I think they kind of got the impression that I was kind of making excuses for um, behaviour. Um, I just want to clarify before I go into this, I am absolutely not making excuses for Harry's behaviour, Meghan's behaviour, Amber Heard's behaviour. What I'm basically saying is these are specific things that are that might constitute the reactions that they have, um, how they behave, but the subject matter um, obviously is completely different. You know, and I do believe... Um, I think narcissistic personality disorder is slightly different because basically they don't care. So that's probably never going to change. But with histrionic, it can change. They have moments of compassion, um, moments where they can possibly um, listen to someone else's perspective. Um, it may not be empathising, but they can certainly uh, understand. But given the right surroundings, so like in Harry's case being around Megan is going to also bring out those narcissistic traits. So in light of that, a article that I, well, a few articles that I've seen about our certain um, quint, um, is that apparently he has now, which is classic victim mentality, has decided that he's going to boycott his father's coronation um, if Camilla is I'm guessing, cr uh, crowned uh, queen consort. Um, now, I know that there are a lot of strong feelings around Camilla, and I'm kind of not really talking about that per se, um, because that's kind of a separate issue, because I know that a lot of people, because of Diana, you know, they're very, you know, very faithful to Diana. I, on the other hand, have a slightly different opinion, but this is about just Harry being Harry. You know, there are so many pictures prior to Megan, where he's with Camilla and he's laughing, you know, he, he could tell that they, you know, they get on really well. You know, he's even stated, you know, that he kind of accepts her now. But oh, shock, 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 um, because he is utilising his mother um, within, you know, just milk, milk, milk. This, you know, his mother's um, passing 
we come in with this victim narrative because it's not the fact I'm not coming to my father's coronation because I've treated my father really poorly and I feel like it would be, you know, or or the 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 kind of feeling of the of the public is I'm just not welcome, which I can completely understand because I have thrown my country under the bus. Um, no, 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 he's not coming out of respect for his mother. So, of course, this again changes the narrative right back to, oh, Harry, Harry is so respectful of his late mother um, that he would be willing to bypass his father's coronation. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of people, like I said, have got very strong feelings around Camilla, around Prince Charles even being king. But this is his father, who before this, for all intents and purposes, he seemed to be kind of quite close with. Um, close with his brother, close with his father, close with his grandmother, um, and close with Camilla. But in true Harry fashion, he has decided that publicly he wants to state. Now, of course, we can take some a little bit of kind of pinch of salt with this because it is the media. But I can actually see Harry saying this, you know, because apparently it's it's sources close to the <laughs> close to the couple, <laughs> aka the couple that are leaking these stories. Um uh, you know, and and I kind of feel that, again, like what they do is they throw these stories out there to see what people will say. Now, I'm guessing for most part, people are going to be like, do you know what, Harry? Don't come here. We don't care. We don't want you here. You know, you have trashed our country. You have trashed the legacy, you know, you or tried to trash the legacy of your grandmother. You have done the most, you know, to me, this tantamount to treason when you talk so badly about the Queen and the country that has forgiven you, the country that has uh, loved and adored you and, you know, in a way kind of put you where you are. Because without us, without the people, um, there wouldn't be a monarchy, you know. And so, you know, instead of acting grateful for everything that you have, which the others do, you just act like a sport brat and carry on acting like a sport brat. So, of course, like I say, in true Harry fashion, he has decided to come out and talk about the coronation and state that he is not coming um, out of respect for his mother. Oh, but but he doesn't mind disrespecting his mother's memory when Netflix are doing a musical or Netflix is portraying her in The Crown um, the way they've kind of depicted her. That's OK. That's fine because I'm getting the moolah, the dollar, the, you know, I'm getting the money in my bank. Um, so I absolutely am fine with that disrespect of my mother. But when it comes to talking about my genetic pain, um, when it comes to milking it on national television for all it's worth, when it comes to those, you know, deals that are coming in, I've got to utilise the royal family and of course talk about at length consistently in every conversation my mum you know now again i'm not saying that people shouldn't talk about their parents but it's always about intent what is the intent behind something if you're talking about your late parent because you love and miss them and it's and it's part of the conversation you know and you always want to you know remember them and never forget them absolutely but we know that's not the case with Harry. We absolutely know that's not the case. He made this pact with his with his brothers who never utilised the mother's name in regards to money or deal or anything like that. And of course, Harry's gone against that because cha-ching, you know, him and Meghan have realised where the money pot is. The money pot is the royal name and obviously his, his mother's legacy, you know. And I, oh, I just feel so, you know... As a therapist, I'm always there to understand people's behaviour. But what we don't do or we shouldn't do is create our, our clients who make excuses for that behaviour because you are responsible for your own behaviour. Now, OK, albeit your past, things that happen in your past can create you to be a certain way. But as soon as that awareness happens, that then can create change. You know, we can't change something we're not particularly aware of, which is kind of where where they've in the past talked about this unconscious bias. 
But to me, a lot of things, especially even with unconscious bias, it's about intent. If I don't know something's there, then it's, you know, it's a chance to learn, but it's also, you, it's kind of, it's like blaming some someone for something someone else has done, which is kind of what, the way he behaves or the way they behave. But it's not about creating this positive change as they, as they try to spin it. It's about money. Let's latch on to something. Let's create kind of this constant kind of reeling in people that are kind of constantly going, oh, you know, Harry really cares about his mom. He's always doing things regarding his mom. No, this is to do with money, pure and simple. Both of them. And actually, and he, to be fair, because she's kind of gone quite quiet. Um, but it's almost like he's running with it now. You know, he's, cr you know, he's kind of just this constant every time. Got to talk about my mum dying. Got to talk about how, how awful this was for me. And I'm sure it was. But if you look at his brother, his brother can recognise that this was a painful time. And you grieve this. And you have to do a lot of work to come through something like this because it happened at a young age. But everyone... You know, that kind of is what well, I said, the most woke mentality, um, their fan base consistently goes on a how poor Harry, poor Harry. But it's without even listening to kind of, you know, how his brother must be feeling. You know, they made this pact to not utilise their mother's death. And here he is doing this along with Megan. He wants to be Diana 2.0. And it's just constant. And now this, another slap in the face for his father, you know, and I know that a lot of people are going to come in the comments, they see Charles as weak and stuff like that, but, and I get that, I do, I get how Charles can be seen as weak, but this is still his son, you know, I can't even imagine, well, you know, well, I suppose I can try and imagine how hard it must be to actually have your son, you know, it's hard enough, I guess, when you have got a child that has, you feels betrayed you, but to then have it where it's in the public eye and he's constantly talking about it, you know, so it's constant slap in the face. And now towards Camilla as well, you know, they have tried, you can see they've probably tried so hard with Harry. And I do believe this is what they're even trying to do now, because regardless whether or not what how we feel, he is still family to them. So I think this is why they're also tolerating Megan. I don't think they will ever trust her. And I certainly don't think she will ever be welcomed back into the bosom of the royal family. But I think they tolerate her because at the moment, she's his wife. <sighs> and breathe. <laughs> so this is, this is kind of my rant. I am just getting really tired, really tired of feeling like there's nothing else this twit can do um and then he goes and does something else you know it's like how many times you know do you, are you literally it's almost like walking up to your to your dad and slapping him across the face you know how many times can you really kind of really kind of punch someone in the gut you know it's like another bit of hurt you know because regardless of how you know, whether or not, like I say, us as a, as a country are like, you know, we don't care. We don't want him here. And, you know, so we wouldn't care less. In fact, if anything, we don't, we wouldn't want him to come probably. But this is his father, you know. And it, and even though, you know, to, he, there might even be some conversation behind the scenes where it's like, you know, with the, the way the mood of the people, it's probably best that you don't, you know, but it has to be. And, and that might have even been stated, you know, in the meeting, you know, I probably feel because it's interesting it's come out now. So I wonder if in this meeting it was probably about the fact that we're going to, uh, you know, you're not going to be on the balcony. Um, you are, you know, if there's a coronation, it's probably best that you don't, you're not seen publicly. Um, because then all of a sudden it's like these kind of, these puff pieces come out. Um, you know, the, 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 they're so glad to be, uh, you know, coming as part of the, you know, the balcony and, you know, and we're going to be bringing our two children and, you know, and it's kind of a, oh, let's make it all about me. Um, and, and I just, and, and, and I will say that I think the Queen has been a little bit clever here. I believe, and this is just my two penneth worth, I believe that she has not wanted them on the balcony. I think the feeling is they are not coming on that balcony. How can we do this 
without the media kind of going, oh, Harry and Meghan have been left out. Everyone else is going to be there. But they're left out. I think they've utilised this slim down monarchy because they've cleverly done it where it's kind of like, well, you know, this way then, you know, if we turn basically it's like the, the, you know, the general working royals that are kind of doing things at the moment, the head royals, they are going to be on the balcony. Unfortunately, Eugenie and Beatrice, I believe because they're not there, um, have to lose out. And I do like them. And I think there's people that should have been there that ha are not going to be there. But I think this was the only way they could do it where they had to include the others, including Andrew. Um, so the media didn't pick up on the, well, everyone's going to be there apart from Harry and Meghan. And this then would have given the the Sussexes the, oh, we're victims again. We've been bullied by the horrible royal family. Um, you know, we've been left out of the balcony when everyone else is there. You know, so I think they've been a bit clever with this and that's the way they've done that. So... The Queen, you know, she really is like a game of chess. You know, she's just, I think she's always like one step, you know, one, two, three, four steps ahead. It's like she knows. But I do feel that the kind of mistake that's being made is that they're really not connecting with the mood of the people. Um, to allow Harry back into the UK to even be part of the Jubilee. Now, I get that he is coming to be there for his grandmother, but any public appearances, I think, would be wrong. And I really, really hope they stick to their word and they do not have them on the balcony, because I really do think that will be a huge mistake. So what are your thoughts, guys? You know, I know it's like a bit of a longer rant, but what are your thoughts on the uh the state the kind of what he's saying about not coming to the coronation you know is this really surprising with the you know a victim <laughs> victim the, the the victim the forever victim couple um you know the and, and I'm going to call them the the duke and duchess because they are no longer going to be in my eyes the duke and duchess of my beautiful home county of sussex i am going to call them the duke and duchess of moan deceito so because they moan consistently and they're very deceitful so that is going to be my new name for them the duke and duchess of moan deceito so let me know your thoughts on this guys and if you want to go now you can because in the next few minutes i will be doing what i am wearing today for the people that are interested so thank you very much to everybody who has watched this video thank you to everybody who is donating to my channel with my mission of bringing free therapy to people who struggle financially thank you to everybody who has bought some of my merchandise to also be part of this bubble community so yes, uh, so now, so goodbye to the ones that are leaving now and obviously just to the next few minutes where people are going to find out what I wear in this video. So in this video, foundation, it, there isn't any, but my skincare is going, is the ordinary. So this is kind of what I use. This is hyaluronic acid. So I kind of, after cleansing my face, I take off any residual makeup, I cleanse my face, and then I pat it dry and then I start with hyaluronic acid by The Ordinary. So that's the first thing I use. Then I use, by The Ordinary again, Argoline. This is very good for skin tightening and it's almost creating a bit of a lift effect. I need a bit more lift, I just want to say that, so it needs to do a bit more work. Uh, the other thing I use then, once that's a little bit kind of, not quite dry, but I then mix it with Matrixel which again is supposed to be the same thing, giving it kind of almost like a tightening feel, um, anti-aging properties, and obviously um, moist not moisturizing, but um, moisture, yeah, adds moisture. That's what I was trying to say. So then after that, when I've done that, obviously, skip, you know, if I was going out, I would always use an FPF. Um, and the one I use at the moment is by Eclat, Mineral, mineral, mineral. Let's get the word out. Sunscreen, 50 plus. Very important, guys. If you're going out, always use this. It's very important. I cannot stress that enough. And moisturizer at the moment. Now I have, see, I do use the ordinary one. As you can see, it's almost empty, but it's quite thick. So that's great at night time. Um, and I use always my trusted Nivea, which I haven't got to hand at the minute. I think I've put it away and I'm not done with it. My trusted Nivea, which I got from my grandmother. Um, she always said Nivea is great. And again, if I need that little bit of extra moisture, I probably will put that at night time because it's quite thick. 
Um, so during the day, I, I kind of flip between this one, which is Lani, Laniege, um, which is, oh, it's it's beautiful. I love it. And it's almost empty. I need to get some more. And one of my favourites, which also acts as a primer as well, is Bobbi Brown Face Base. They're a little bit pricey, these ones, but The Ordinary is not pricey. Nivea, not pricey. Um, and But to be honest, you know, uh, in my opinion, a moist, a mo any moisturiser really is good enough, as long as you moisturise. So then the next thing I always use, now there's always an argument of, do you f use foundation before before your concealer or concealer? I don't think it matters. I think just do what feels better for you. So I use for my concealer, which is crease proof and it's very good, I have to say, which is Revolution Pro. And they do lots of different uh, shades. So you just find the shade and it's so cheap. I think this is like, um, I think it's like five pounds something. It's really, really super, super cheap, I have to say. And they do another one, which is kind of uh, this one, which is a new one. And it kind of, you twist it and it's, as you can see, I I'm, I'm messy. But they're very good. Obviously, the shade range is entirely up to you. But before, oh, and I just want to say before I do that, uh, again, Revolution Pro. Again, very, very cheap. I don't use expensive products, really. Um, primer, eye primer. Very good, very good. Now, I don't have foundation on because I don't like to wear it if I'm inside or during the day because it makes my face feel a bit um, thingy. But if I was going out, I probably would use a tinted moisturiser, which I tend to use. Number seven. Um, City Light Tinted Moisturiser because I do love my tinted moisturiser. Sometimes I like to go a little bit shade darker, but rather than buy a whole new one, I just add a bit of this to it. Rimmel, which is, again, cheap, you know, cheap, cheap. So I add a bit of that to it to get, create a bit of colour. Um, uh, I also do my eyebrows, which I kind of use a little bit of this, which is sleek. Please excuse the messy. Um, so I use that, um, which is kind of like a gel and a powder. And I try and do like little strokes um, because I don't know if people have, I've spoken to people before about the fact that my um, my condition that I have, I've got a degenerative illness and it doesn't, my hair growth is pretty bad. So, and, it, and it's very sparse on my eyebrows. So I use that. Um, I also use this, which is one of my kind of favourites, and it's but it lasts, and it seems expensive, but I, honest, to, honest, it, it lasts and lasts and lasts. I've had this for <clears throat> oh, that's bad, maybe six months, and look, I've still got loads, loads left. It's hourglass, and I tend to put that as a powder over my face, like a setting powder. Um, but if I don't, then I use one by. This one, Kiati, Kiati London, but any setting powder is, is good enough. Or a setting spray, and I, my one of my favourite ones is Revolution, again, really cheap, Glass Glow. You can use a matte one, whichever you choose. Um, and my mascara. My mascara, I think, is probably my most expensive item that I have. Um, oh, I will say this, that when I do use foundation, this is a great foundation and it matches to your skin. It's it's really lovely and the finish is lovely. Um, but my mascara, I flit between this one, which is IT Super Hero Black. I love this. It's one of my favourites. Um, but I also have been known to use cheap ones like Rimmel or... Um, well, yeah, Rimmel, <laughs> Maybelline, you know, I, I will, if, if I like a mascara, I will buy it. It doesn't matter the price. Um, I haven't got any eyeshadow on today, guys. Uh, oh, and the blush that I'm using is this one by um, Collection, which again is really cheap. I think this is about like, again, four pound, super cheap. Now, I appreciate some of these products might not be available in the states or other places but i will say that wet and wild is also something that i would use in the states and they're not that expensive um and there's another one but i can't think off the top of my head but i will let you know so that's kind of it guys that's kind of my beauty routine today so i appreciate this is now taking the video on to a bit longer but i will do a um 
in the beginning I will do a kind of thing to show the timestamp so you can kind of miss this or not or, or not. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I even enjoyed my Tuesday tantrum and I will speak to you all tomorrow. Don't forget my live with Trev on, sun on Sunday. No, don't come Sunday because I won't be here. Mm -hmm. Friday, 7 p.m. Do not forget. So I will see you there and I will see you tomorrow. Love you, Bubble family. Mwah. Take care. Bye.